Hi everybody, Jake here for FM Scout. Now quite recently I saw a list by ESPN of the top 10 under 21 players in world football currently and there's a lot of these lists about and it made me think, what about the wonder kids of old in Football Manager? How have they got on? Have they lived up to their potential? So I thought for today's video, why not take a look back at wonder kids of five years ago who will now be like 21, 22, 23, have they reached the potential that they originally had? Or have they completely missed the mark and did Football Manager get it wrong? Now obviously I have researched and already gathered this list and I can tell you that there's some players on this list who you wouldn't even think about, you probably haven't thought they existed for like three years and then you'll find out that they were one of the highest rated wonder kids in 2016's version of Football Manager. So we'll get into all that in a minute but before we do, if you'd like to see another one of these kind of videos, if you do enjoy this kind of content, let us know. Hit the like button, comment which years you'd like to see next, would you like to see 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this is currently 5 years ago in 2016. So if you'd like to see anything like that, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to the FM Scout channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell to be notified when we upload. So that being said, let's run the intro and get straight in to these old wonder kids and see how they've got on. Okay, so starting off with Wonder Kid goalkeepers, and there is of course Gianluigi Donnarumma who, in a way, has lived up to his potential. He's still playing out there at Milan and doing pretty well of it. He's been their first choice keeper for a little while now, so fair play to Donnarumma. He was always a top rated and has been for a number of years, but under him, the cheap option that loads and loads of people used to sign from a cabbie, Tel Aviv in Israel is pre-drag Reykjavik. Under Donnarumma he was the best rated young goalkeeper in the game. I remember he was a must sign for quite a few years but he is now playing for Stade de Rime. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Out in France. Now even though they've got a pretty decent history they're not currently one of the better teams in France. However pre-drag to be a number one goalkeeper for a team and be very important and to be honest attributes wise he is very good still. Like everything you'd really need in a goalkeeper. Yes he's not going to play for Manchester United but he might still be a decent player and I wouldn't say that he hasn't filled up to his potential but Football Manager might have overrated him in the old versions of the game now that's not really a fault on their part it's very hard to judge how good these youngsters can be I mean you have to take a look at someone like Jack Wilshere years ago where he looked absolutely amazing technically awesome and his career kind of fell off due to injuries and other things like that you can never really predict how a footballer's career is going to go even with all the data in the world but pre-drag has done pretty well for himself. He might even have another move left in him. He's got plenty of time left in his career. So let's see what happens with pre-drag. But I would say, so far, he's one that's missed the mark of his Wonder Kid status. Now we're moving on to the defence. And the best Wonder Kid left back in FM16 was George or Jorge. I don't know how you pronounce it, but we're going to say George. He's a 24-year-old Brazilian now, on loan from Monaco to Basel. So he apparently isn't good enough to get in Monaco's team currently. If we have a look at his career, he was originally at Flamengo out in Brazil. Monaco signed him in that year of 2016 and to be honest he played a full season from pretty much it looks like here I could be wrong but I think the 16-17 that kind of era was the Monaco side with the likes of Bernardo Silva and Bappe Bakayoko when they did really well in the Champions League correct me if I'm wrong but I think it's around here so he would have been part or at least in the squad during that time and unfortunately, he hasn't lived up to the billing that other players in that squad have now, even though, at least in Football Manager, his attributes are actually really good. He just hasn't really reached the heights in his career. If he had been a Monaco left back for years, there's nothing too bad with that. That's, of course, pretty good. Monaco, one of the better teams in France currently, but he is out on loan, so he obviously hasn't been deemed good enough for Monaco. He was apparently sent on loan out to Porto, where he didn't do too good. Then he spent a season out on loan with Santos. And now, within FM21 and Real Life 2, he is now out at Basel, where I don't know how well he's doing, but attribute-wise, hopefully he's doing pretty well because he's got everything he needs to be a good attacking left-back. He was the best-rated left-back wonder kid in the whole game back in FM16. Hasn't really worked out for him. One cap for Brazil, at least he made the national team. Still got time in his career, of course, like many of these will. But has his time passed now? Has he missed his chance of being one of the better left-backs in the world? It would seem so. But in my opinion, if Football Manager is right, he definitely has the skill set to be a very good left back. I don't really see where the flaws are in him. Maybe it's a mental thing, a hidden attribute thing, who knows. But that is George, and that's another one who I think has missed the mark in this Wonder Kid list. Before we have a look at the first of our two centre backs in this team, I'd just like to let you guys know that I do have my own channel linked in the description. We've surpassed 2,000 subscribers on there now, so thank you very much for that. We have a little save going on. So after this video is done, if you want to come into the description and check that save out, a lot of you guys are liking it, then that will mean a lot to me. But yeah, we're here with Alessio Romagnoli. Now he is probably, I would say, the most successful player in this list now he was rated as the best centre-back in FM16 and he's done pretty well for himself 25 years old 
Appearing for the Italian national team is the captain of AC Milan now, and overall, he's a pretty good centre-back. I know he's been linked with moves to the Premier League in the past, the likes of Chelsea have always been interested in him, but since that time, in around 2016, he has really flourished. He's been a consistent performer for the AC Milan side, who have probably, as a team, been underperforming in terms of trophies won and stuff compared to previous years. But with Rom Agnoli being the captain of one of the most historical sides in Italy, you can't really say that he hasn't lived up to his wonder kid potential. So that is Rom Agnoli. In my opinion, the most successful player in this list and the centre back in our team who goes alongside the next centre back you're about to see now. Under Rom Agnoli, the second best centre back wonder kid in the game was Jesus Vallejo of Real Madrid. He is now out on loan to Granada in the first division of Spain and since 2016 his career has gone okay but not great. He was deemed to be the next big thing according to football manager. He really should have taken over Sergio Ramos's mantle but it doesn't look like when Ramos does hang up his boots that Vallejo will be able to fill that role. I mean since 2016 he's appeared a few times for Real Madrid here and there and then he got his chance in the Premier League with Wolves where he only appeared twice and then eventually it looks like he's been called back and put out on loan to Granada in the same season. I don't know the full story there, but it seems like at Wolves it definitely didn't work out. Then he's out on loan at Granada again for another season here. Maybe he can find his feet now in senior football, but he's definitely not going to live up to the potential that he once had. He was meant to be the next big thing in centre-backs. If we were to believe football manager, he would have been the next Puyol, the next Ramos for that Spanish national team. So far, he apparently hasn't even got a cap. So that is Jesus Vallejo, and that is our fourth player, and I would say three out of four have now missed the mark, and he joins that list. From the FM Scout list, I used to find these best wonder kids from 2016. The highest rated wonder kid right back was this guy, Boya San Imaterio. Now, he is playing out in Numan, I don't know if I've pronounced any of this stuff right by the way, in the second division B1 in Spain and he has definitely not lived up to the hype. To be honest, on that list, the set of right backs wasn't the best. But being at the top of that list, we probably did expect a bit more of this young Spanish right back. Now 23 years of age, of course most of these players have still got time. He was at Sevilla originally in 2016 and since then he apparently played a few times for their B team. He then went out on loan to Lugo in 2018 and since then has been on a few loans and is now recently join Numancia. It seems like despite the hype on Football Manager, this guy didn't live up to his potential or again, maybe Football Manager just got it wrong, but that is Boya at right back. Still, he's a professional footballer. You can't really say that he's failed, but he hasn't lived up to the potential that Football Manager did give him back in 2016. Heading back to France, where it seems like a lot of these teams picked up some of these young wonder kids, and we're looking at Andres Cubas, who I remember signing back in the day. He was originally an Argentinian wonder kid, but it seems like he has chosen Paraguay as his choice of national team. Is now playing for Nims, Nems, I don't really know how you pronounce that, out in France. I mean, to be honest, considering I do a little save in France on my own channel, you'd think I'd know how to pronounce some of these names, but I really do not. Cubas is definitely one of them that I've forgotten about. I used to sign him religiously, and since then, he hasn't really done too much. I mean, again, playing in the first league in France, and he's an important player for his side, definitely not considered a failure, but in terms of the potential that he could possibly have reached, Back from 2016 when he was playing for Boca in Argentina, it doesn't seem like it's worked out too well. But the French side have clearly seen something in him and signed him for around £3 million. It is his first season in real life now, I don't know how he's got on. But it seems like with the attributes he's got, he can be a decent midfielder. It seems he's definitely focused on the defensive side of the game. Another one where he definitely hasn't lived up to the hype that he could have reached. But it's certainly not gone awfully for Kubas here, and he is the first midfielder in our three-man midfield. Okay, now our next midfielder is Abdu Diakate. Now, this guy was above the likes of Ruben Neves on this list, Milinkovic Savic, by a long while. He was deemed as having way more potential than them guys, and here he is out in Gorsica, on loan from Parma in the Slovenian First Division. Now, again, he's only 21, he's definitely got room to do better in his career. I will reiterate, if any of you wonder kids in this list are watching, the career hasn't been bad at all. You're a professional footballer, which not many people can say, but Diacate here had a lot of potential and it doesn't seem like it's worked out as well as Football Manager had predicted it would. Physically, he's actually a very nice central midfielder. Technically, he's got some decent attributes too, alongside his mentals. But the fact that I would assume he would have been part of Palmer's team if he's been loaned out from Palmer's team, it might go to show that he hasn't reached that potential just yet. Although, to be honest, since 2016, he hasn't really been given that much of a chance, never really getting any first-team football in the Serie A for either Fiorentina, where he originally was, or Parma. Since then, he's been out on loan a few times, apparently not played 
all that merch and he's ended up out here with Gorica in Slovenia. Now, I think it's safe to say he's another one that hasn't lived up to the hype. Again, not a bad player in any shape or form. Still got plenty of time, but the Senegalese 21-year-old, the chance to be one of the best midfielders of his generation has passed him by at this point now. Now to a player who seemed like he had the world at his feet. He was the highest rating attacking midfielder Wunderkid in FM16. It's Maximilian Meyer. Now, he's one of the ones I've actually seen with a closer eye because he played for Crystal Palace fairly regularly in the Premier League. He wasn't a consistent starter, but he did appear quite a few times. You can see here 29 times, 17 times, and he always looked good. He just didn't look like the player that I originally had in my head because I'd seen him so many times in Football Manager where he was almost unplayable. He was so technically good in that midfield. He has apparently got quite a few caps for Germany, four caps with one goal. He was seen as one of the jewels in the under-21 team, but since then it hasn't really gone that way. He's definitely doing well for himself though. Playing for FC Köln in the Bundesliga now, he's probably going to get regular starts there. I don't know how his season's gone, but you would assume he will definitely get his chance to appear in the Bundesliga a fair few times. Either footed, can play a variety of positions, good physically, mentally and technically, not stand out, but not poor in any shape or form. He did show a lot of promise in them first few years at Schalke, where he was a consistent player from a very young age. So hopefully he will get that chance now to really redeem his potential out in the Bundesliga but it hasn't really worked out for him so far, so we're going to have to add him to the list of misses in terms of what Football Manager predicted to be some of the better players of their generation. Into our three-man attack now, and we are starting out out on the left wing with Zachariah Bakali. This is someone who's been on my radar for a long time, whether it be through Football Manager or even before that when I used to play FIFA career mode. He was always someone that was seen as a must-sign. He used to be out at Valencia or something like that, didn't he? I haven't actually checked this, but I do remember this. Yeah, 2016, he was playing for Valencia. Seemed like he had the world at his feet, the Belgian winger but since then it hasn't gone too great been signed for Anderlecht recently and is now out on loan at Beershot after struggling to find appearances in the 2019 season. Technically a very, very good winger. I don't really know how it's gone wrong from here. He's physically quick too with a nice bit of pace, acceleration and agility. His other physicals though are very bad to be honest. They're very bad according to Football Manager. But with them traits and that attributes, it looks like he could be a good winger. Two caps for the Belgian national team. It just didn't work out for him the way that everyone had predicted it too. Football Manager might have got it wrong yet again here. It does make me wonder which of the current football manager won the kids aren't going to make it in real life i mean there's plenty but let us know in the comments what you think is eduardo camavinga going to be appearing in the slovenian first division in a few years time who knows the world of football is so crazy so many things can affect a player's career but a lot of these guys careers whether it be due to being overhyped or they just didn't really get the chance they needed haven't gone the way they expected it to so that's zakaria bakali the first attacking player on our list only two players left now thank you guys for watching hope you are enjoying this kind of content and now let's move over to the right wing. And on the right wing, we've got Bilal Oudchik. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. I'm 100% am. He plays for ADO Den Haag out in the Eredivisie. The Moroccan 22-year-old can play on either wing and was tipped for greatness on that right side. Not just like he was a good wonder kid. He was one of the best. When I was doing research for this video, I saw his name and it just like lit up a thing in my head that just remembered him because I forgot about him for years. Again, he's another one where he just really hasn't reached the heights. Have Football Manager just really overrated so many of these players in the past? Maybe they got it wrong. Maybe he just really hasn't lived up to the hype. It happens so many times in football and that leads us on to the final player on our list, the striker. Have a guess who you think it is and let's have a look. Okay, here we are with the final player, our striker, and I imagine seeing his name might be ringing a few bells in your guy's head. You might be remembering this guy. It's Donis Avidajaj. I don't know how you pronounce it. He was part of that same Schalke side in 2016 as Max Meyer. He was a must-sign, always went on to do very, very well. In Football Manager 16, he was always a top-level striker. The only player above him in the striker position on the list that I looked at for this video was Anthony Martial, where you can say that, I mean, he's a Manchester United player, whether people think he's good or not is another question. But he does appear for Manchester United. He scored plenty of goals. You can't deem him a failure in any way. Maybe he hasn't lived up to his full hype. But for me, Donis here was someone much better to put in the video because it just reiterates the point that you really don't know what's going to happen in a player's career. The Kosovian 23-year-old can play a variety of positions, but his career hasn't gone too well. He did go out on loan to the Netherlands a couple of times with Willem II and Roda JC, where he played a few times and scored a decent amount of goals in the amount of games he was given but never really given the chance by the looks of it to be the leading striker for either team. Another clear indication that he really hasn't lived up to his potential is the fact that he has gone on a free deal every year for the last, what's that, since 2018 he's moved clubs every time for free every year. So he's gone from Willem II to Trabon support out in Turkey where he played eight times and scored once, then went to Hearts in the Scottish division where he played three times and that was it. Then he moved out online to FC Emmon where apparently he didn't appear and he's now playing for AE Limassol. I don't know how good they are, I don't know 
if they're one of the better teams out in Cyprus, I'm not clued up on Cyprus football. Maybe he now is getting the games that he wasn't originally. Maybe he can live up to a bit more of the potential that he had, but it seems like, again, the ship has sailed for him. His attributes are pretty decent. He's not too stand out, but he really just hasn't lived up to the hype that football manager put on him at such a young age. He's now played six times for his international team and scored twice. So that's not a bad return, really. And with that being said, that's the last player in our list. So quite a lot of, I don't want to say flops, but a lot of players who didn't live up to the hype and a couple that did, but it seems like on the whole, if you were to take 10 of the best wonder kids from this current football manager, FM21, who knows, maybe half of them won't live up to the hype that they do have. I want you guys to let me know in the comments, who do you think that will be? Will it be Kamavinga? Will it be Ansu Fati? Who is it? Who's not going to reach the hype that they've been given in the current football manager 21 game? And with that being said, we can end the video there. So thank you guys for watching. Do let me know what you thought of this kind of content. Do you want to see more of it? Do you never want to see it again? Let us know. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe and ring the notification bell on the FM Scout channel. And feel free to come check out my channel linked in the description where we're managing Lil and a lot of you guys are really enjoying that. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But thank you for watching. Stay safe, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.